Alright guys, I was driving home and was dumping out some of my trash and I noticed that during this process I had to go back to get my phone because it was in the car. There was a PC in the trash. And it looks like a PC with a GPU and everything too. So I'm gonna take this. If I can uh might have to put the phone down. Hold on, guys. It's literally in pretty good shape. I don't know what's going on. It's like a really lightweight kind of piece of crap case. Some cutouts over here, and it's got a pretty modern I/O. Uh, even had looks like what well, looks like Wi-Fi in it, or maybe Wi-Fi was an option. But you have HDMI, DisplayPort, and a few other things back here. Let's take this home and see what it is. This is a cool find. <laughs> so I was actually working on a completely different video this week, but um, <clears throat> yeah, let's check this out. If you're interested in a dumpster PC, stay tuned. So before powering this up, I'm just gonna take the side panel off and actually see what's in here. Um, <clears throat> as discussed before, it does have like a semi-modern motherboard, it seems like, and a GPU, but there's a good chance it probably got thrown out because it does not turn on. And I haven't tested that yet, but I wanna actually get this panel off. There we go. Man, it's stuck in there. Wow, that was really hard to get off. All right, look at that rat's nest. So we got a, we got a loose SSD. This is a, it's like 120 gigabyte. Let's just pull this out of here. Next, we got a GPU. This is a Sapphire. Uh, let's see, it's got two six pins, so it's probably like an R9 290 or something like that. 7950, HD 7950. And we got one stick of memory. And what platform is this? I have to take the GPU out to see. Oh man. The CPU cable is in the way of this GPU. I bet you're <clears throat> going to attempt something illogical. Bear with me. Look at that. I was right again. This is this is not the not the good way to do this, guys. All right, there's the GPU. Pull the camera off the tripod for a better angle. And let's go over what these parts are. So we have a P8Z77 motherboard from Asus. Um, I had to actually look that one up. I thought it was a regular Z77 or Z87, but um, it's the P8 version, which is a pretty cool board. So if this board works, that would be awesome. Uh, there's a cooler on here that's clearly missing the top shroud, whatever goes on there. And then some kind of really cheap fan. Um, Rosewell, this is definitely a Rosewell case. I think I remember seeing this case a few times on Newegg for like 20 bucks. Um, so Rosewell case. Really crappy. Uh, there's a fan up top here too, which is just unusual. And then we have a single stick of memory, eight gigabytes of looks like HyperX. And then we have a questionable power supply. And what I wanna do is instead of uh, turning this on and seeing if it all works, I'm actually gonna test the power supply first just to see if the power supply still passes. All right, so we got the power supply tester, and as you can see, it looks like everything's good. Actually, I actually had to use some extensions because for whatever reason, these cables are just really tight. Has to do probably with the age of the power supply. They just, I don't know, the tolerances have kind of shifted around on products. This is definitely a cheap power supply, so I don't know. Just didn't want to break this. 
Um, by the way, this thing is awesome. I'll put a link in the description if you guys want to check out these. Uh, it's like a $15 power supply tester. Been using it for years now and it's done pretty much, it's paid itself back a million times. So now I'm just going to pop in a new CMOS battery and make sure, uh, you know, the GPU is back in here properly. I might actually use an extension so that this cable can go up top correctly. And uh, we'll see if this GPU and setup works together. All right, we have a simple keyboard and mouse hooked up. I don't know where the mouse is, it's somewhere around here, but the keyboard is all we need. And uh, we have a green light down here, which is actually a really good sign. That means the board is probably working, um, hopefully. And yeah, let's power it up. This is the first time for me and the first time for you. So it is turning on. That's an awesome sign, actually. Is it though? If this just works, this will be uh, kind of awesome. I'm suspecting there's got to be something wrong with it. I mean, why would you just throw it in the trash if there wasn't something wrong with it? But who knows? People might look at this and be like, hey, this is old. I don't need it anymore. Too lazy to drop it off. And they just toss it out. All right. So a platform this age probably should have had a post by now. Um, I don't know what's up with that memory stick. Let me let me see if I, I can put a different memory stick in and see if it posts. Uh, I don't know what, I'm not getting any like official codes down here. Boot device LED. Yeah, so it's not booting properly. Well, first things first, it actually is technically in the wrong slot. This should be in this slot, the far right slot, but I'm gonna change it out anyways for something that I know works. This is a eight gigabyte stick and this is DDR3. And I was just using this on my test bench before. Can I do this with one hand? This would be pretty funny if I could. Yep, that's fully in. All right, let's, let's try a new stick of memory. All right, so the new memory is in, but unfortunately we're still getting that boot light down there, which means there's something not working properly. And I can tell that these fans are not spinning on this card at all, and they don't spin when it starts up. So unfortunately it might be this card that has died. But luckily for you guys, I have a spare 7970 that I know works. I actually replaced these fans. This is like one of my favorite old models. I used to think before the EVGA 10 series came out that this was like the best looking card when I was younger. Um, I still think it looks pretty cool, uh, especially considering you know how old it is versus something like that. So let's just swap out the card and see if it works. So as you can tell by this same GPU by XFX, which is definitely a better brand than Sapphire in my opinion. Uh, Sapphire uses two six pins here and they use an eight and a six. And unfortunately this PSU only has two sixes, but they do make these little dummy uh, plug things. So I'm gonna use that. Hopefully it doesn't affect anything. I, I doubt it will. This cable is definitely enough for this one card. All right, guys, hopefully this is it and we won't have to change too many parts. Uh, let's see. Yep, hopefully it'll post. All right, look at that. So we know that this GPU is bad. This is unfortunately a pretty decent old GPU. I kind of like collecting these old kind of silly cards as you can probably tell by this insane amount of crap on my walls. We should test a few games on this to see actually how it runs. I'm gonna obviously use this card. The performance is gonna be very similar to the other card, but um, let's just say you did find this in a dumpster. Is it even worth using or testing playing games? And uh, you might be kind of surprised because it will run some esports titles. And yeah, so let's jump to that. All right, guys, so let's go over the settings for Fortnite. And so we get, we're running 1920 by 1080. 
unlimited frame rate, DirectX 11. Uh, we put the resolution scale to 100%, FXAA is on, and then everything else is on low. One thing that's funny about this game, and as I'm about to die, uh, when you first boot this game up, especially on older hardware, you actually have to let it run for a little bit. You gotta do a few matches before the stability kind of irons out, because there'll be a little bit of background shader compiling, and it will be kind of stuttery. This game also just is forever stuttery on some hardware. I don't know why, but um, not like anything major. It's just, you'll see kind of some hitching here and there. And uh, yeah, I just died. So hopefully next time I load back in, we will have a nice steady match. If not, then I can blame it on the hardware. All right guys, we're in a different match now and I can tell it's already starting to kind of smooth out. We're getting a nice solid like 65 to 80 frames per second. Although right there, it just dropped down. When there are a lot of players on the screen, it will kind of go all over the place, but there's not really much I can do. If it's a 1v1 or 1v3, you're pretty good off. Like you can, you can maintain that 55 to 60 FPS range. Uh, driving the bike around on all these different environments here, it seems to be pretty good too. We're staying within that, that nice range. There's a lot of ups and downs and micro stutters, but nothing shy of an old AMD card, to be honest. This guy sucks at shooting. Look how bad he is. I'm just gonna keep doing this, it's funny. Do 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 do. All right. I love this no device found that keeps popping up here. I'm actually trying to get 3D Mark to run and unfortunately it keeps crashing. So uh, bear with me. Also, pardon this massive spot over here that's uh, a dead backlight. It's part of the backlight actually that just died on this screen. I got this screen on Facebook Marketplace for like 30 bucks. So I'm pretty happy with it. Other than that, it's just a test bench screen. But yeah, let's see if I can get the original Fire Strike to run. This is the old school version uh, before the extreme, before all the 4K versions. This is like the first version of Fire Strike. So it looks like we scored a 7,990 and they consider that to be excellent. Uh, I don't know about that. I think uh, this was a pretty average score for back then. Looks like Battlefield 1440p Ultra, we can get 35 FPS. So yeah, I don't really know what else to do with this Junker PC. So if you guys have any suggestions, leave a comment down below. I was thinking of maybe throwing it in a new case. I have this uh, white case that's sitting right next to it, but I kind of think it's like a little too nice for that. I'm thinking more of like a cheap black case or something that can, you know, a couple RGB fans in there. And then maybe I'll give it away for free with a better GPU. It does have a i7 in it. So the i7 is pretty, it's not relevant per se, but it still performs okay for a super budget system. So I'll see you guys in the next video. Make sure you drop a comment, like, subscribe and all that stuff. Till next time, peace.